This traffic video is meant to provide basic information about steering patterns around bridges and buoys for rowing and paddling on the Allegheny River. We also hope to warn rowers and paddlers of some of the hazardous areas to avoid and how to navigate around them. We will first review navigation around buoys. Then we will discuss appropriate or best practice arches to use under bridges in the Pittsburgh pool of the Allegheny. Finally, we will point out some of the hazardous areas that have a tendency to damage equipment and review some reminders for the back channel. General traffic pattern around buoys is to stay to starboard of red buoys and to port of green buoys. You can imagine that green buoys are an extension of shore, with some exceptions, and red buoys tend to mark the middle of the river, like yellow lines on a road. These are used to help guide barges through bridge areas safely and into the locks. Buoys can be hard to see, so it's good to know where to expect them. If rowing in the dark, coaches should shine their spotlight to light up the reflective tape on the buoys so that bows and coxswains can steer around them as appropriate. Buoys can drift some, but usually only in very high flow. There are four green buoys we deal with on the Allegheny. Two of them mark hazards for our boats, and two are more to guide commercial traffic. We'll start upstream and work our way down as we review them. By Etna, downstream of the 62nd Street Bridge, there's a green buoy that marks a shallow area on the north side of the river. This buoy only affects downstream traffic by requiring boats to move more towards the center of the river. It is important that you watch for barge traffic before coming out to go around the buoy. By the curve in the river upstream of the 40th Street Bridge is another green buoy. This one does not mark any hazard for our boats. Many people come to the center of the river, and sometimes even the wrong side of the river, to get by it. Although it looks like there is not much room to the north of it when coming downstream, there is enough space for multiple boats by shore. It is best to stay to this side, as it gives you better visibility around the turn in the river to port, and the danger in coming out for this buoy is that a barge coming around the bend, or another team with multiple boats, might end up head-on with you. If you do come out for the buoy, make sure not to cross the middle of the river or take the turn too tight. The Millvale buoy is usually where crews meet after coming out of the channel through the 40th Street Bridge. It does mark a shallow area to be avoided by all boats. Crews coming out of the channel should not go further upstream than this buoy. At that point, they should turn and cross over to go upstream or turn to go downstream. Crews coming downstream should keep this buoy on starboard and keep an eye out for crews meeting to start their practice. The last green buoy on the Allegheny is by the Fort Wayne Railroad Bridge downtown. There's a green buoy almost directly downstream of the bridge support that separates the main arch and the first starboard arch. This is one of the buoys that drifts more noticeably. Crews should simply avoid hitting this buoy but can go to either side of it. Red buoys have a tendency to sneak up on crews. In blind boats, it is generally a good practice to stay closer to shore, where you can keep an eye out for expected hazards, like turns in the river, marinas, and debris near shore. If staying too far to the center of the river, these bright red cans have a tendency to cause problems without any warning. There are multiple red buoys on the Allegheny, and there are two areas where you'll want to keep an eye out for them. Just downstream of the 62nd Street Bridge starts the first red buoy. They continue every couple hundred meters upstream to the Emsworth Locks. It is important to stay to starboard of these red buoys. TRRA recommends that you keep at least one red buoy between your boats and the lock. The other area where you will see red buoys is downtown between the 6th Street Bridge and Fort Duquesne Bridge. This red buoy seems very close to shore, but it is still important to stay on starboard. Downtown creates a difficult navigation area for commercial barges and the Gateway Clipper Fleet. It's important that we hug the shoreline to give them the center of the river. All bridges have markings and or lights noting the center of them. This also notes the center of the river. A general rule is to stay to starboard of the center. However, there are some best practices to encourage safe navigation under bridges on the Allegheny. We will again start at the top of the river and work our way downtown. For each bridge, there will be a photo and an elevation drawing, so you can see the relative water depth for each arch. With some of these bridges, there are multiple arches you could choose to use. This is useful for if you have a larger fleet going out at once. However, if you have a small number of boats, we recommend choosing the more starboard option. 
As fast as we think we are, most commercial and pleasure boats are faster than us, and we need to yield the center of the river to them. By staying further away from them, that can also reduce the effect of their wake on our shells. The 62nd Street Bridge has three arches. We can follow the general rule of staying to starboard of the center of the bridge for this one. This gives us the option of using either the center or starboard arches. For the 40th Street Bridge, we have to take into account that the north arch is used for channel traffic. Therefore, it is best when going downstream to use the center arch. This means that when going upstream, it is best to use the starboard arch. Traffic coming in or out of the top of the channel should have full use of the north arch. Crews coming in the top of the channel and downstream in the north arch should yield to crews exiting the channel and coming upstream. The 33rd Street Railroad Bridge near the Hodo finish line has two water arches. Ideally, crews would use the main arch for downstream traffic and the other for upstream traffic. Barges use the main arch in both directions. During Head of the Ohio, this traffic pattern changes for upstream racing. The 31st Street Bridge has three water arches, but one is not accessible due to the Washington's Landing Marina. Ideally, crews would use the center arch for downstream traffic and the city side one for upstream traffic. Barges use the center arch in both directions. During Head of the Ohio, this traffic pattern also changes for upstream racing. The 16th Street Bridge has two water arches. Going downstream, crews can use the center or starboard arch. Barges use the center arch in both directions. Upstream, the far starboard arch is blocked off, so crews can use the center arch. We recommend staying to starboard while going through that arch. Veterans Bridge, or what many rowers call Numbers Bridge because it has water depth markers on the center bridge support, has two water arches. Note that the elevation drawing for this one is taken upstream where all the others are taken downstream. Going downstream, crews can use the center or starboard arch. Barges use the center arch in both directions. Upstream, crews can use the center or main arch. We recommend, again, staying to starboard while going through. The Fort Wayne Railroad Bridge downtown has three water arches. The main arch is used by barges, but also upstream traffic. Downstream, crews can use the center arch or the first starboard arch. The far starboard arch going downstream can be used, but has hazards that might cause problems, which we will talk about later. The Three Sisters, which are the 6th, 7th, and 9th Street Bridges, have specific traffic patterns since they are so close together and commercial traffic has little time to react and lots of blind spots. Downstream traffic should use the center arch where commercial traffic goes. Upstream traffic should stay close to the city in the smaller starboard arch. If heading downstream, crews should use the center arch of the Fort Duquesne Bridge. There are viewing docks and other hazards that stick out from shore, preventing the starboard arches from being useful. Upstream traffic should use the far city side starboard arches. Buoys and bridges are some of the river hazards we deal with. Others include permanent or semi-permanent areas where there is debris, shallow areas, man-made structures that we need to be aware of, and the channel, which being narrow has some areas that are hazardous to people who are unfamiliar with them. As you head out of the channel, there are some areas to be aware of. If coming from the Washington's Landing Boathouse, you will have to go under the 33rd Street Railroad bridges. Downstream of this bridge, it is quite shallow close to the island. There are also some large rocks that love to have motor engines hit them. Stay in the center of the channel through this part. On the upstream side of the railroad bridges, it is shallow on the Millvale side of the channel. So be careful if you're docking at Millvale not to come too close to shore too soon. When exiting the channel, the hazards multiply. First, there's a bottleneck effect that happens as the cut is very narrow. It is best to stay in the center of the channel. Center being dictated by the landscape, not by the water. The area people fish on by, Mil by Millvale looks very shallow, but that area drops off a bit more severely than the island side, which has a ramp-like bottom up to shore. Many crews go closer to the island because it looks like there is water there, only to find oars and sometimes their skeg hitting the bottom. When you go through this cut, it is important to get through it quickly. This means crews should avoid doing pause drills, arms only, arms and body only, or rowing by pairs through this section. Keep enough pressure on the blades so that the coxswain can steer. 
Once you're through this part, it's important to maintain your point through the port arch of the 40th Street Bridge. On starboard, it continues to be very shallow until you get out past the Millvale Pavilion or by that tree trunk that sticks out of the water on starboard. Also, when you exit the channel, there are hazards on the port side. A general rule is to not let your boat or oars go under the tree line where there are many large roots. Crews who spin downstream of the 40th Street Bridge will find that they have a blind spot and can't clearly see downstream traffic due to the bridge support. Please wait to turn until after going through the bridge as this is safer. Note the crews coming upstream who need to come in the top of the channel can turn to go in the channel but need to spin closer to the 40th Street Bridge so that traffic leaving the channel can see them and so they don't get caught in the shallow areas. The river changes a bit every year and it takes some getting used to to new hazards. The 62nd Street Bridge is an excellent example of how things change from year to year or over the course of a season just a bit. The starboard arch heading upstream is a bit shallow compared to the other arches. This has meant that large pieces of debris have gotten stuck in rather annoying places. So far this year, we are not aware of this happening, but it's something to just keep an eye on. When heading downstream, it's important to not get too close to the marina at Washington's Landing. Not only will this help cut down on negative interactions with pleasure boaters, it is recommended based on safety needs of our crews. Our boats need time to react or to stop should a boat come in or out of the marina. Make sure your crew has that space. Also, just as we don't want to be waked, it's not helpful if we wake the people at the marina. Please keep your launches as far away from the marina as possible while maintaining traffic pattern. Note that if you see a barge coming upstream, it is best to wait upstream of the marina to let it pass. Pass. Make sure that your actions are obvious so that barge captains can easily see that you are staying out of the way and being safe. Remember that we should never be crossing in front of a barge's path unless there is at least a thousand meters separating them and us. Further downstream, just past the marina in the Strip District, there is weird turbulence that happens in the water. It is especially apparent in higher flow. This is caused by old structures under the water that disturb the natural water flow of the river. It's good for crews and coxswains to be aware that this might affect the set and the steering. Going downstream, there are some very large trees and debris that hang out on the shore side by the far starboard arch of the Fort Wayne Railroad Bridge. This is why crews coming downstream may want to avoid that far starboard arch unless they go through it with some distance to shore. It appears when approaching the Three Sisters bridges going downstream that it might be possible to go through the starboard arch. This is the case for the first two, but then you'll have to check it down so that you don't hit river rescue. So remember to use the main arch downstream. At the point, and especially if you start to take the curve down the Ohio, be careful not to stay too close to shore as there are mooring poles in the water. Be careful also of other boats and docks. This video is only a review of the Allegheny River. If you go on other rivers in Pittsburgh, make sure that your coach and coxswains know the river and have researched the traffic pattern and best practices for your boats. Remember the general rules of the river about buoys, arches, and staying on starboard. Be careful at the point turning to go back upstream. Remember to maintain traffic pattern. If you go down the Ohio, you may have to cross over to Mount Washington before coming back. Keep an eye out for commercial traffic. Remember, we are small and fragile. Be defensive in your steering and your interactions. When coming upstream, you can cross the river to get in the channel once you are under the power lines. If coming downstream, try not to cut sharp into the channel as there's a sandbar at the bottom of the island that is worth avoiding. You also don't want to cut too far over to shore because there is quite a bit of dangerous debris peppered around that curve. Note, if you ever come out the bottom of the channel, it is important not to hug that starboard curve too close. The biggest cause for losing skegs at the entrance to the channel is actually not any of the hazards already mentioned. The biggest one is a permanent concrete block that can be found if you draw a line down the middle of the pedestrian bridge and then connect that line with the end of the pedestrian ramp on shore. There are also other rocks and debris scattered around this block as they get caught on it. TRRA gets a permit each year to put a buoy as a warning to coaches and crews. Whether a buoy is there or not, this hazard is always there and will not go away. 
It is important for crews to enter the channel with the boat in line with the shore of the starboard shore while staying on the starboard side under the pedestrian bridge. Some crews get lucky going through the port side, but it's luck and I don't recommend risking damage to that route. Remember, when doing pressure pieces in the channel, please keep them downstream of the 31st Street Bridge. Know that your piece may be interrupted by crews coming into the channel or by other crews who are also rowing in the channel. No team has priority over channel space, so make sure to be courteous to each other. A general rule is for all crews and scullers to stay on the starboard side of the channel, whether rowing up or downstream. Boats without coxswains have the right-of-way over those with coxswains. Be courteous by controlling your wake from launches, especially around other boats and the docks. Between the hours of 4 to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday, crews are prohibited from returning to TRA docks via the top of the channel, barring adverse weather conditions or an issue which concerns the safety of the crew. Please try to abide by the traffic pattern of crews exiting upstream out of the channel and entering from the bottom of the channel. Please be safe on the river and remember to communicate to your crews, steerspersons, coxswains, assistant coaches, and to other coaches on the river as necessary to ensure we remain as safe as possible. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Good luck with your racing season.